from a maximum of somewhere between 180 and 200, as I recall, I'm sort of estimating now, to 600 pull-ups in the equivalent amount of time, which is absolutely incredible. What? According to the internet's leading neuroscientist, rapidly cooling core temperature between sets can improve your workout better than PEDs. Could this really be possible? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to try to find out for myself. This is what happened. Ooh. But you gotta focus. Before I started dunking in ice between sets, I had to take some initial measurements. So after doing a warm up, and don't worry, I'll keep it consistent, I then started my control group. The first exercise, trying to hit 10 pull-ups for 10 sets with only 60 seconds of rest between each set. And I would not allow myself to hang on the bar for longer than 30 seconds. Now let me tell you, by the second half of this exercise, my reps became significantly less. Would the cold water help me significantly increase my reps like it was referenced in the study? We'll find out in a minute. But first, the next exercise I wanted to test. 15 push-ups for 10 sets with only 30 seconds of rest between each set. And now not spending more than 30 seconds in the push-up position. Just like the pull-ups, I started strong, but towards the end, my push-ups were significantly decreasing. And then getting warmed up for the next exercise, which was squats. Really quickly, huge shout out to Bells of Steel for hooking me up with these bumper plates. Who couldn't always use some more bumper plates? Bells of Steel is a Canadian company. They make quality home gym equipment at an affordable price. In fact, this entire power rack right here is actually Bells of Steel and I've been absolutely loving this thing. If you are interested, I have an affiliate link in the description. Thank you, Bells of Steel. With that being said, let's get to these 10 sets of squats. Trying to hit 10 reps with 95 pounds but with only 30 seconds of rest between each set. And very important, not allowing myself to take longer than 30 seconds on each set. And just like all of the other exercises so far, towards the second half of the sets, it became increasingly difficult as my body struggled to hit 10 reps. And then after all of this, I tested my max hang time for five sets with only 60 seconds of rest between each set. Come on, bro, look enthusiastic. Oh, you know, but wait, don't forget a bonus set of bicep curls AMRAP. and after just one set I was done That was a savage workout. I'm like exhausted now. We're gonna come right back to it But next time with some ice and that I did 48 hours later acquiring some buckets and some ice filling two buckets with just cold water and then two buckets with ice why these two options? So when the effect seems to be wearing off here, if there's any, then I'm gonna jump to this, and maybe I'll even get an extra shock out of the system to give more adrenaline, and that might even play over into more muscular strength as well. It's like light speed, ludicrous speed. So did it work? Let's find out. After doing the exact same silly warm up, I situated myself for the first exercise. Pull ups, let us begin. So I did the first two sets without any cooling because in the initial test, I did the first two sets with a full 10 reps. And I didn't want to overdo the cooling too early on. Oh man, should I use it? Let's do it. So just dipping my palms the first time, I actually did feel a slight cooling sensation. Drying the hands and then going to set three, I was able to crank out nine reps, which was actually two more than the previous day. I just did the palms, maybe I wanna go a little bit more deeper because I still feel pretty hot. Going in, out, go. But on the fourth set, only cranking out five reps. Mm -hmm. Oh no, oh, come on, just let him sit in there a second. Leaving my hands in the water a little bit longer to try to actually cool the core temperature down because in the studies Dr. Huberman was referencing, it had to do more with core temperature and not a shock from the cold. <sighs> oh. Woo. I felt a little extra boost on that one. Five seconds. So dunking my hands in the cool water for at least five seconds in between each set seemed to give me a little extra boost. But that quickly wore off towards the end sets. So it was time to jump to a ludicrous speed. And right after this, I noticed an adrenaline rush throughout my body, straight to my head. I felt like I had more power on the first pull up and then it kind of became a struggle. But I still ended up getting more reps on the final sets compared to the initial test. Whatever, it's push-up time now. So moving on to push-ups, with my arms being residually cold from the dunks during the pull-up exercise, I did the first three sets without any cooling. But then, we need to dip. Okay, five, oh, 
arms up to the triceps feel better. Ooh. 30 seconds, it's going quick. So with only 30 seconds of rest between each of these sets, five seconds in the cooling bucket accounted for one sixth of my rest time and drying off my arms pretty much accounted for the rest. Regardless, I did feel a slight boost after the first cooling dunk. And with the push-ups, it felt like going deeper in the cooling buckets gave me more of a boost. Oh, no. But with such short rest times, I felt like my muscles were still really heating up. We gotta go ludicrous. And literally after the first ludicrous dunk, oh, give me a boost. I felt an instant boost in muscular force that seemed to last throughout the set until the very last rep, where I just couldn't. Oh. And rolling with this, I wanted to switch it up for the next couple of sets, dunking elbows in first, which I actually found specifically for push-ups worked very well. And I was able to beat every rep range on my initial test all the way up until the last set of push-ups, where even with the ludicrous dunk, I completely burned out. Oh man, I can't do anymore. And moving on to squats. I got some pink squat shorts on for today. So I realized I probably should have went barefoot for the initial test because I'm gonna go barefoot now because I'm dunking my feet. So I'm just gonna disclose that. But I was wearing barefoot shoes, so close as you can get. Situating myself and doing the first three sets without any dunking, I then started to experience that overheating feeling. Ice, I need some ice. Oh. oh. With only 30 seconds of rest, I had to act fast. And that I did. To my surprise, simply dunking my feet in the cold water allowed me to beat my initial rep range for the next several sets. Well, which led me to this stupid idea. Oh, that's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. You're ruining the experiment, bro. <sighs> But aside from the few idiotic mistakes I made, it did seem like the cooling of my feet allowed me to do more reps for almost every single set. <sighs> With only three minutes of rest between each exercise, I tried to transition to each as efficiently as possible. For the max hang time test, I used just the two ludicrous buckets, not just dunking my hands for this exercise, but leaving the buckets available to dunk my feet intra-set in order to possibly give me an additional adrenaline boost or potentially rapidly cool my core down so that I could hold even longer. Well, did it work? Well, I actually ended up holding for more time on the first two sets, and then the final three were about the same. <sighs> I hit a wall. Man, it's just like coming over me, like the exhaustion. Still gonna do a bonus set of bicep curls, don't forget. Now finishing up with the bonus AMREP set of bicep curls, I quickly felt the fatigue just overcome me. Now something additionally crazy I noticed after all of this ice dunking with the exercises was the pump. Was it greater than before? It certainly felt so. Yo, did that maximize the pump in any way? I don't know. So how well did this intraset cold exposure work? Well, after recording some cringy cold exposure b-roll for this video, I analyzed the data, and this is what I found. What is up, home slice? All right, looking at these results. Control group in the red, and then the cool dipped in the blue. We can see for every set that we started to decrease below the maximum, it seemed like the cooled group was slightly more, with exception to like one or two sets overall. And if we add up all of the reps before and after and we compare the two, we can see there is approximately a 12% increase in total reps for pull-ups, about a 9% increase in total reps for push-ups, a 15% increase in reps for squats, and about a 9% increase in overall max hang time. All right, I know what you're thinking. There's plenty of things that could be wrong with this experiment. So you could potentially argue that ice and water had nothing to do with it. It was the fact that I was just used to it from doing the control test, first of all, going into the testing phase. Another thing you could be thinking is, bro, you essentially only tested muscular endurance. What about brute strength? But everything is kind of a pie. Some muscular endurance plays over into muscular strength vice versa. If I can increase my overall workload at what appears to be my same effort, then maybe I am increasing my strength. 
So in this original experiment, observation that these researchers were looking at, what they were really trying to do was see if you could cool down the core temperature of the body, thus increasing workload during an exercise or workout regimen. And based on their results, they found that to be the case. What I'm getting at is their study didn't really have anything to do with the factor of like a cold shock adrenaline rush, kind of like mine did half the time, but rather just cooling the core temperature down. Now the method they used to do this, I actually found super cool. What they used were these types of mittens that the subject put their hands into that sealed around their wrist and created like a small vacuum, like suction, you know, like outer space where it would make your hand explode, but not to that intensity. And then they made that cold. Why the vacuum? Think about it. When your hand, body, whatever is exposed to cold, what generally happens is your veins vasoconstrict, they get tighter, right? Decreasing that blood flow, that vacuum created inside of it would prevent vasoconstriction. So you'd still have a good amount of volume of blood going through the hand that would be getting cooled by the mitt, which would then cool down the core body temperature faster than just dipping your hands in ice or something like that. So really overall the conclusion based on these studies is that your body likes to perform within a certain temperature range and if it overheats too much then your performance goes down but if you can cool yourself back down to that optimal range then you're going to perform better longer get more work volume done and that over time working like that can improve strength endurance etc but now when i think about that all these technology this mitten and all this stuff and my argument to that is like wouldn't you become dependent on that tech? So based on my experience, just using cool water and ice water, I did feel like it gave me a little extra boost, around 10% overall, as you can see based on the results. But something additional to note was the adrenaline rush when going super cold. If I look at some of this footage, you can see after going super cold, sometimes a lot of my reps are faster just for a few seconds and then they slow back down, which could be argued as an increase in temporary strength or at least speed. Is it actually beneficial or not? I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. If you guys don't know who Andrew Huberman is, where have you been? Check him out. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn those notifications on. More videos coming out. Peace. I will see you all.